Every cuber wants to solve the Rubik's Cube in the most efficient way possible. This allows for a faster solve, as the fewer moves required, the less time it'll take. Taking this to its natural conclusion, the question arises, what is the smallest number of moves that is required to solve the cube from any position? If God had a cube, it would surely solve it perfectly every given time, so how many moves would it need for the most difficult case? This number is known as God's number, and it can be very difficult to calculate. For simpler puzzles, such as the 2x2 or Pyraminx, the number has been known for decades and can easily be found by brute force. The normal 3x3, however, has a much greater number of positions than either of those puzzles, by several orders of magnitude. The positions would take hundreds of years to comb through with even the most powerful computers in the world. Clearly, some other method is needed. Before we go on, we should talk about how moves are counted. Currently, the most common way that moves are counted is by calling a quarter turn or a half turn a single move. The way moves are counted is called a metric, and this is known as half turn metric. A variation of this is used by the WCA today. However, there is another metric that used to be quite popular where only quarter turns are counted as one move and half turns are two moves. This is, fittingly enough, called quarter turn metric. There are other ways to count the number of moves, of course, but these are usually left out when talking about God's number. This is important, since God's number is different depending on what metric we use. We'll mostly stick to half turn metric here. In 1980, it was known that God's number must have been at least 18. This can be shown by counting the number of cube positions, and then counting the number of positions that can be achieved using 17 moves, which is a smaller number. Therefore, the number of moves required must be at least 18. Obviously, this proof isn't very good and only gives the lower bound. As a result, people started working on finding the upper bound. Most attempts were initially just counting the largest number of moves required in various solving methods and were quite high as a result. The first known upper bound was 277. The first serious attempt was found by Morwen Thistlethwaite, who published a method that could solve the cube in no more than 52 moves. It works by reducing the puzzle down through various restricted positions until there was nowhere for the other pieces to go. It was not at all practical for human usage, although a related method called human thistlethwaite was described by Ryan Heiss in 2003, but it did work. As time went on, and computers became more powerful, the algorithm improved, to the point where every position could be solved in just 45 moves. Hans Klusterman used a slightly different method, and managed to bring the number down to 42 moves. In 1992, Michael Reed proved that 39 moves was sufficient, however, his celebrations were cut short when Dick Winter lowered it to 37 just a day and a half later. This was not improved upon until January 1995 when Reed came back with an upper bound of 29 using Herbert Kosciembe's algorithm, a more compact form of Thistlethwaite's. The same month, he proved that the superflip pattern required 20 moves to solve the first improvement in the lower bound for 15 years. No new improvements would be found for nearly 11 years. Then, in December 2005, Silvio Radu finally improved the upper bound by just one move. Using essentially the same method as Reed with a few optimizations, Radu showed that any position could be solved in 28 moves. The next three years was a series of pure optimizing, pushing the upper bound further down and down. 27, 26, 25, 24, 23, and in August 2008, 22 moves. At this point, 
there wasn't much more optimizing that could be done. It was mostly just finding a powerful enough computer that could actually process all of the cases needed to find the answer. Thomas Rokiki, Herbert Kosiemba, and Morley Davidson had worked out a method that could find it within a human lifetime, but they needed an extremely powerful computer. Preferably multiple computers. Some of the most powerful in the world, maybe from a company that likes to do semi-silly things? Google to the rescue. John Dethridge, an engineer at Google, heard about the problem, and after some negotiations, managed to get the program running in the background of the servers. As a result, what could have taken centuries was done in just a few weeks of real time. In July 2010, it was announced that God's number was exactly 20. No position needed any more than 20 moves to solve. In half-turn metric. Don't forget, this was just in half-turn metric. Quarter-turn metric still hadn't been solved. In fact, the lower bound hadn't even been set until 1998, a full three years after half-turn metric, when Reed discovered a position that required 26 moves. Incidentally, this is God's number in quarter-turn metric, but that wouldn't be proven until 2014, with help from the Ohio Supercomputer Center. There are still many mysteries left surrounding God's number. For example, what is God's number for the 4x4? Or 5x5? Is there a pattern? There is only one cube position that is known to require 26 moves in quarter-turn metric. Are there any more? And what about the supercube, where each centerpiece needs to be oriented correctly? They will keep mathematicians guessing for a very long time.